Hello, welcome. I want us to accomplish at least two things in this video. And the first one is to develop a sense of what independent and dependent events are. And the second is to understand how to deal with them in a formula. To understand what it means to say that the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given A for all events, and then for independent events, so for all events, especially dependent as well, the first definition is true. And then for the second, this is only true when you have independent events. You can just multiply the two things. So this first definition is for all events, and the second definition is specifically for the independent events. So where does this come from, and, and why does it work that way? So let's clear some things off here to get a sense of what's going on. And I think when I am trying to understand something, a concept, I like to draw a picture. That's my approach. I think that makes sense. So I'm gonna draw that. So for independent events, let's draw two buckets. These are buckets and inside the buckets are letters. Let's put A in the first bucket. Here's bucket one. Let's put B in the second bucket. And then let's put C in the first bucket and D in the second bucket. Now let's say you're playing a game, and in this game you're picking out letters from the buckets. You're taking them out. So I want to know, what's the probability, and let's assume in this game that you have to start at bucket 1 and then go to bucket 2. So you start at 1 and go to 2. Let's say I want to know the probability of picking out A and B equals. Well, we take the probability of A. Right, if picking out the letter A, that's one out of two, and multiply it by the probability of getting a B. That's also one out of two. And that's gonna give us our answer. That's one half times one half equals one fourth. And we can think of this also on a tree diagram. On the first bucket, you can get A or C, and then the second bucket you can get B or D. And you can see here that there are four options, A, B. Is the first, AD is the second, CB is the first, and CD is the CT, CB is the third, and CD is the fourth. So there's one specifically, um, an A and a B, it's right here. This one branch out of four is our one fourth, right? That's what we're, we've got right here. Now, um, we we're able to do this because they're independent events. That just means if I take out the A here in the first bucket, I take it out, it has no impact on the probability of getting a B in the second bucket. Whether I grab an A or not and put it back or not in the first bucket doesn't impact the second bucket. And because they don't impact each other, they are independent. And in that special case, we can multiply their probabilities. But what if we put all of those letters in one big bucket? A, and then B, and then C, and D. Now, if I said to you, what's the probability of getting an A and a B, right? What's the probability of getting an A and a B? Well, it depends how the game works. I'm going to assume that we do not, do not replace the letters. So... Let's start with A first, and let's assume that you start with an A. You're, you're, I'm specifically asking you what's the probability of getting an A and then a B. So here, with an A, the probability of getting an A is 1 out of 4. Right? There's one A, it's out of all 4. Okay, so I know I'm going to start with the probability of A. Now, in this case, I can't, I cannot just say that's times the probability of B. Because the probability of getting a B is impacted if I took out an A first. If I don't put this A back, which I won't in this game, what's the probability of getting a B? Well, there's three letters left, so it's not one out of four, it's one out of three. It has changed. The probability has changed. So we say, well, the probability of getting a B given that we chose an A first. The probability, this this read, this is our conditional probability. This is the probability that we got A given that A, B, the probability, probability of getting B given that A was taken first. 
probability of getting B given that A was taken first is a conditional probability. Now, what does it end up being? Well, that's going to end up being the probability of getting A, which is one fourth, and the probability of B, which is one third, and that's one out of 12. Right? It's a different probability. And here, our tree looks different too. There are four choices to start A, B, C, D, and then there are three choices after that. If I chose an A first, there's a B, C, D. If I chose a B first, there's an A, C, D left. If I chose a C first, there's an A, B, D. And if I chose a D first, there's an A, B, and C left. Now that's just 12 different branches. I'm not going to outline them all, but I want to show you that the one we're interested in is specifically an A and then a B, that one branch out of the 12 here. So when the probability of one event impacts the next, that's a dependent event. In that case, we have to consider the condition. We have to consider how the first choice impacted the second. But if it's independent, we don't need to consider that. If it's independent, we can just multiply the probabilities. Now, it is true, this is the last part, that this definition right here will work for dependent events, but it works for all events. So this works for independent events, too. And I'll explain what I mean. This works for independent as well. In other words, it always works. Independent. Oh boy, independent, in deep, in the, oh boy, it's been a long day. Let me slow down for myself. Sorry about this. Independent events too. So in other words, it works for independent and dependent. Why does that make sense? Well, let's assume we don't, we don't know if the events are independent or not. So the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has occurred. And we're going to use this formula because we don't know. We don't know if they're independent. In our bucket scenario, our first one, there were two buckets. In the first bucket, AC. In the second one, BD. Pick the letter A and then the letter B. So what's going to happen? Well, we can use this formula. But something interesting happens. The probability of A and B equals the probability of getting an A, which is one half in that first bucket. There it is, one out of two. And then the probability of B, given that an A was chosen. Well, if you look at this diagram, the probability of B getting an A, given that A was chosen first, is still one out of two. And incidentally, that is, what is that? That second one out of two? That's the probability of B on its own. In other words, the probability of B, given that A has occurred, is the same as the probability as just B on its own. So we can finish by saying, well, that's the same thing as multiplying the probability of A, one half, times the probability of B. And this is the crucial, I think, definition of independence that keeps popping up on the regions. The, one of the tests for independence is that the probability of B is the same thing as the probability of B given A. And that's just a mathy way of saying, listen, the probability of B is the same whether A has occurred or not. So if you're considering probability of B on its own, or the probability of B given that A has occurred, you're going to get the same thing. And that is the definition of independence. They're independent literally because that, that, if, that event, A happening, has no impact on the value of the probability of B. So that's our definition for independence. If the probability of B given A equals the probability of B, then A and B are independent. And the last thing I would think about is you've got this working definition here for the intersection. Intersection means end, it's this symbol right here. So the last thing to consider, sorry, this is getting a little messy, is, I can do it down here, just some algebraic reasoning. If the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given A, we could divide both sides by the probability of A and get the probability of A and B over the probability of A 
equals the probability of B given A. I just divided both sides by the probability of A. And here's another typical definition you see for conditional probability. It's just based on the intersection definition right here. So those are connected. And that ends up being useful sometimes because they will tell you what the probability of the intersection is. They will tell you what the probability of one of the events is, and they want to know what's the probability then of B given that A has occurred. So you would just, you would just divide these two, and that will give you the answer. All right, hope this helped.